Welcome again to Grasshopper for Rhino, ABCs, 1, 2, 3s. This is incredibly introductory. I'm moving from the uh, params, which I've done, into what you can see here in the purple, all of the um, math categories. Uh, we're actually on to the operators, and I pick and choose ones that I think are most interesting. I think I've left out mass addition and mass multiplication uh, relative differences, which are easy enough to figure out. So I've cut and pasted those over. I've brought them over here, and I'll be changing them to a nice blue when I'm done. But right now, it's a cautionary yellow saying we haven't done it yet. Um, the operator's bar is pretty much your basic calculator, even though it does get into some pretty interesting logic. Um, so let's take a look at it. Um, the first one is dead simple, so I just used uh, number sliders. Uh, and if you're not familiar with this, you're going to want to go into detail and understand it. I have a panel on the side, and what I've done is I've inputted by holding down shift all uh, input into uh, the into the same panel. So uh, so it comes up as a list. So you just have to look at them as different uh, uh, identifiers from 0 to 9, uh, which are 10 components. And what I have here are these 10 components. So addition is quite simple. If I take these two number sliders, negative 2 and 3, and bring them together, obviously if I add them together, they're going to be 1. If I take a division tool, you're going to see they come up with a float number in the negatives. You have multiplication, you're going to see they... Uh, definitely do the same thing as your calculator would do. Uh, your negative is going to do exactly that. Swap it. You've got a power component, which you can think of uh, negative 2 to the power of 3. Nice little calculator you can make for yourself in Grasshopper. Not that not that yeah, practical, but well, I guess it's practical. Subtraction is the same as you go down. Um, you could bring in your, your tools and number these as you go to know what they line up, or you can put them in the independent panels. But I'm just doing this. Absolute value is nice because it'll take a negative value, which I think I brought in from negative 2, which comes up 2. Um, factorial is a very interesting tool if you haven't thought about it. 5 factorial, for example, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Keep in mind that 0 factorial comes out to 1. I've always found that very interesting about mathematics that, you know, when it didn't make sense to have a zero factorial equaling zero, which is zero times zero. If you think about it, it's actually zero times one, um, which equals one. Uh, just an interesting little point about factorials that always agitated me when I was in mathematics. When, when you can't make the rules, you've got to, when the rules don't work, you have to come up with something else. I think complex numbers reflect that as well. Um, anyway, you've got uh, integer division, which is going to divide these two numbers. Uh, and then pull the integer out of that, which is interesting. Uh, it'll round up or down depending on where that uh, float sits. And then you got modulus, which is a wonderful tool to divide a number by another number and then come up with the remainder. So uh, very interesting tool, and you're going to have to use it. And you can use it logically in what you uh, do. It, it may seem simple to start and basic, but you're going to have to know the basics in order to go deeper into what you do geometrically with any of these forms or design-wise. Uh, mass addition. Oh, I didn't bring mass addition and mass multiplication in here. Well, it's pretty simple. There's your result. There's your partial results. If you plug in your partial results, you see it as it's being calculated. Uh, but really, you probably for mass addition and mass uh, multiplication just need the answer. Um, moving right along, we've got our equality, uh, larger than, similar, and uh, so, uh, similarity is kind of interesting because you can have a threshold on there. But basically, it tells you if these numbers are equal, obviously false. Um, uh, and is inequality uh, true? Well, yes, it's true. Um, so you start thinking in the Boolean kind of sense of ones and zeros and false and uh, trues and what makes sums. Uh, so wrap your head around here, go through here, change the numbers, and see if you can make sense in your mind and memorize why those, uh, why those things change as you move uh, those digits around. Um, so interesting to see. Um, and I've plugged in the absolute difference in this one. Uh, holding down shift is how you uh, bring in wires and then take them out. Um, I take them out with control, shift, uh, sorry, control, and just uh, redo the wire. Best if I demonstrate that. Hold down control, remove it, uh, put it in, and then you can hold down shift to bring another uh, item in, and it will actually click in. Uh, so I'm going to take that one out by hitting control, and you see the red arrow. Um, basically here I've got gate majority, which is interesting, it takes three values and finds out which is uh, the majority, so false is now the majority. And then you end with gate and, gate not, gate or, gate xor, gate nand, gate nor, and gate xnor. Um, very interesting to wrap your head around here. Uh, play with these values and watch your values change in their list. If you cannot get your head around that, you're just going to be one of these people that does the exam and fails it. Uh, in the gymnasium at the University of Waterloo. You've got to get your head thinking a little more correctly when it comes to how a computer interprets data and chooses its Booleans of true and false. 
uh, hood on information. Anyway, very basic demo. Um, I think it's good enough to kind of go over it and, and let people sit with it. Um, I can grab this and uh, I'm just going to change the color over to a nice, beautiful blue. Except my face is there. So let's try it again. And I like to just have this. Let's see if I can pull a nice blue in there. Oh, it's not the perfect blue, but it's a nice little blue. Put that one in. There we go. All right. And now we're going to continue. Moving right along, we will go into polynomials, which should be pretty interesting and fun. And if you're not wrapping your head around this side of the scientific calculator, you're probably not going to go farther in the scripts and into programming. But I think this is where things are going to get a little slow, and maybe demonstrations are in order at a later date. But let's just get you knowing these nodes are on the main toolbar for Grasshopper for Rhino, and knowing where things are is the other half of knowing what things are. Just read that in the beginning of Diderot's encyclopedias. I probably just paraphrased that. Anyhow, on to my math shirt. We've still got a few more tabs to cover, and we should build a pretty interesting file on GitHub. You're welcome to pull this off and play with it. I'll be uploading it when I'm done. These files look a little mean to start, but they're really just the control panels and getting your head around, oh, several hundred nodes before moving in the plugins. Thank you for watching.